Hi, welcome to our functions and graph topic. We're doing example 12 uh, just now. We've been looking at asymptotes, uh, which we covered in uh, examples kind of 10, 11, uh, 10 and 11. So if you didn't uh, check out that kind of introduction, then I would suggest you do so. We were looking at vertical asymptotes. So what we're going to have a look at in the next, next few examples are the non-vertical asymptotes. And that is, it's either a horizontal asymptote or what we call an oblique asymptote. That is an asymptote which uh, has a gradient to it, which is not zero. Um, so this, the, the screen here tells us a bit of a condition that we need to look for. So for any rational function, f of x is equal to g of x over h of x. So that's we've got polynomial uh, expressions uh, on numerator and denominator. Um, we're looking for uh, the order of both of these polynomials. In other words, what's the highest power of x in both cases? So uh, condition one, if the order of g of x is less than the order of h of x. You know, for instance, uh, if 1 over x. So that's effectively an x to the power 0 polynomial, and that's an x to the power 1 polynomial. So the, the order of the numerator is less than the order of the denominator, it could also be a function like x plus 1 over x squared plus x minus 3. Order 1 over order 2. Then if we have that situation, then we know we can expect a horizontal asymptote where the, that asymptote has the equation y equals 0, which is on the x-axis. If the order of the two polynomials is the same, so we're dealing with uh, x terms, x squared terms, so the same order, then there will still be a horizontal, horizontal asymptote, but it will not be on the x-axis. It will be y equals some value other than 0. And in order to get an oblique asymptote, the order of the denominator would have to be one less than the order of the numerator. In other words, we've got a wee improper fraction, a top heavy fraction, we would something like, for instance, you know, x squared uh, plus 2 all over x minus 5. That function is an order 2 over order 1. The order is one more on the top than on, on below, therefore it would be an oblique asymptote. We're not going to deal with functions where the, the difference is more than 1. Uh, in favour of the numerator, uh, we're just going to deal with these. Now, I've got a little illustration of each of those uh, that I, I did highlight in uh, one of the previous examples. So uh, here's, first of all, uh, if I have a look at the top left-hand part of the screen here, we're on Desmos. You can see the function uh, is an x term over an x squared term. So the numerator is of order less than the denominator, and you can see here, I can... Uh, just uh, zoom in, we have an asymptote which is on the x-axis. Okay, and you can see that as we zoom out. Uh, if we have a look at the second uh, example, second graph here, you can see here on the top left the function has a linear term divided by another linear term, so the order of the numerator and denominator is the same. And you can see from this that we have still got a horizontal asymptote, but it's not on the x-axis. In this case here, the equation is y equals 6. Okay, And the third example, we've got our oblique asymptote. The gradient is not 0, and if you have a look at the expression that formed it, we can see it's basically an x-squared term divided by an x-term, so the order of the numerator is 1 more. So these are our, our non-vertical asymptotes, the different cases. So we're going to have a look over the next few examples of each different case. So example 12, the first one, we're going to have a look at uh, the horizontal asymptote y equals 0. Now it's the least common one to come across when we're studying them because you have to kind of, there's a special case for them. So we're going to uh, have a look at it, but it's not the normal uh, function to explore. So let's have a look. Investigate the non-vertical asymptotes of this function here. So by considering the order of the numerator is 1 and the order of the denominator is 2, we can predict 
indeed that there's going to be a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis, but we can prove that, okay, so investigate. So let's have a look at the function. It says f of x is equal to x minus 2 all over Uh, well, what I'll do is I'll multiply that bracket out. So we've got x squared uh, minus x and plus 3x is plus 2x. And then 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. So there's my uh, quadratic function in the denominator. What I'm going to do, it, it's hard to investigate what's going to happen for values of x at this point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by x squared. And that means that I'm going to end up with a 1 at this point here. And that's going to be quite crucial. So let's do that. I'm going to divide every term by x squared. So x divided by x squared is 1 over x. Minus 2 divided by x squared is 2 over x squared. So that's our numerator. Divided by the first term, x squared divided by x squared is 1. Um, we've got positive 2x divided by x squared is positive 2 over x. And then we've got minus 3 over x squared. Now, you might wonder why we've done that. The reason for that is that we can more easily investigate what's going to happen as x is very large. Okay, Because let's make a picture of our asymptote. Okay, um, Wait till we get a, a line up here. So here's my asymptote. It's a dotted line because it doesn't really exist. And the equation of that asymptote is y is equal to 0. OK. Um, therefore, I don't know why it's dotted. Well. What we're really looking for, x, down, x here is tends to negative infinity. You know, very uh, large and negative. Over to the right, uh, x is going to be very large and positive, tends towards positive infinity. So what we're looking to do, as we did with our asymptotes before, we're interested on in knowing, is the curve going to kind of be above the line when x is large and negative, or is it going to be below the asymptote? And also, when x is large and positive, is it going to be above or below? Where these are our kind of possibilities. So we're investigating x when it's large and negative, yeah, as in, you know, negative infinity and also when x tends to positive infinity. So let's try and do that. So as x tends to pos well, infinity, okay, uh, either way, it doesn't matter. What, what does y tend to? Okay, well, y tends to, as x gets very large, let's look at each of these uh, values in turn. As x gets very large, like a million, then we know that 1 over a large number tends to 0. So 1 over a million is almost 0. 1 over a billion, 1 over a trillion is closer and closer to 0. So that value there is going to be as near 0 as we can make it without it being actually 0. Uh, and similarly, uh, if you've got that value there, 2 over x squared, as x tends to infinity, that's also going to be as close to 0 as possible. Um, let's look at the denominator. Well, we can see that uh, we've got a 1, and that's a constant term. It's not dependent on x, which is why we divided by x squared, because we would have one constant term in this whole uh, expression. 2 over x, again, as x tends to infinity, that value is going to tend to 0. And similarly, negative 3 over x squared is going to tend to 0. So in other words, y is going to tend towards 0 divided by 1, which is 0. In other words, the y value is going to tend towards the line y equals 0. It's never going to get there, but it's going to tend towards it. So notice I've used these arrows. I've never put equals 0. We're saying as x tends to infinity, y tends to the value 0. So what we can say is that our horizontal asymptote has the value is the line 
y equals zero. That's the only time we can introduce equals zero because we're talking about a line uh, that technically doesn't exist, but it's an imaginary line, and we can say the equation of the horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. Okay. Now, what about the nature of it? Is it going to go above or below the lines as x is negative, as x is positive, are we going to become above or below? So let's check the nature of the asymptote. Okay, so what we want to investigate is when x is large and negative. So let's copy down uh, let's give a wee bit of space here. We're going to copy down that function that we uh, devised when we divided it through. f of x is equal to 1 over x minus 2 over x squared all over 1 plus 2 over x minus 3 over x squared. Okay, so that's our function having divided through by x squared. So we're going to have a look at what happens in two cases as we did with our uh, investigating the vertical asymptotes. But this time we're not investigating to the left and right of the hor of a horizontal vertical line. We're seeing what's going to happen as x tends to positive infinity. Well, y tends towards, we're looking for signs this time rather than values. Um, we're seeing here that Let's have a look at the, the first term. Well, that's going to be a positive number. Okay, 1 over uh, x is going to be very small. It's going to be close to 0, but it's going to be positive. But we're subtracting from that a value which is 2 over x squared. Now, hopefully you can see that because of x squared in the, in the denominator, that value is going to be smaller than the first value, 1 over x. So, when we subtract... 2 over x squared from 1 over x, it's still going to be a positive value because the first term is going to be larger. Let's have a look at the second. We know with confidence that even that these two terms, it doesn't really matter if they're larger or smaller than each other because we're basically adding and subtracting a tiny amount from the number 1, which is going to be positive all day long. So it means that uh, the y value is going to be overall positive, which means it's going to be above the asymptote line when x is large and positive. So we can update our what's it going to look like line up here by saying that when x is positive, it tends to positive infinity, the y coordinate is going to be just above the line. In other words, it's going to be coming from the top okay we can say that it, it uh, one of the, the ways which we can say that it tends to um if you like that it, it tends to basically this value here zero plus just a tiny bit more than zero what about if x tends to negative infinity well let's investigate let's yeah uh, i'll try and get rid of these little circles and we'll investigate all the values. As I say, this is a bit more laborious than the other two types of asymptote, so just bear with me. When x is large and negative, then 1 over x will obviously be like negative, 1 over negative a million. It's going to be almost 0, but it's going to be less than 0. It's going to be a slightly negative value. And here, we're going to subtract from that 2 over x squared. Okay, Now, that's not as big a value as 1 over x. We've already worked that out, and therefore it won't pull it across 0. It's still going to be the, the main influence is still going to be this first value. Okay, um, And in fact, in saying that, of course, even if, it's, if x is negative, the squared term is going to be positive, and it's actually going to make it even more negative. So we know that that value there is going to be a negative value. And if we consider the denominator, again, those two fractions are almost zero, so they're not going to affect the overall value of 1, which is positive. So what we can say is that when x is 
tends towards negative infinity, our y value tends towards that zero line, y equals z tends towards zero, but just below it, because that overall effect is negative. In other words, it's going to be below the line. So what that means is that on my asymptote up at the top, if this is the line y equals zero, that when x is tending towards negative infinity, the y coordinates are just going to be less than zero. So my asymptote is going to be underneath the dotted line. Okay, so what we've done here is investigated the nature of a rational function um, where the we started off, the order of the denominator is greater than the order of the numerator. We kind of worked out this process of deciding that the asymptote was going to be horizontal with an equation y equals zero, and we then were able to study in quite uh, by having to look at every single value here, uh, where the uh, the graph with the, the curve was going to um, tend towards either above or below the asymptote. Okay, so when you come across functions like that, that's the technique that you have to use. There's a slightly easier technique for um, when the order is the same or higher on the numerator, which is great, and we'll look at that in example 13 and 14. But hopefully that's been helpful for just now.